this morning, I want to be very fast because we are in the mood of thanksgiving. But I'm not speaking on thanksgiving today because I, I know last three Sundays I spoke about it to tell you how important it is for somebody to thank God. How important it is for somebody to receive a heart of giving thanks to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Now this morning, I want to speak on a topic I titled, Why is my prayers not answered? My topic this morning is a question mark. Somebody says it's a question mark. I said, somebody says it's a question mark. Can I hear you? Somebody says it's a question mark. Why is my prayer not answered? How come, how come uh, you, you, you come to church, you pray all the prayers that are necessary, you pray all the prayers that you believe that your pastor, your prophet, the apostle, the bishops has given to you to pray. And after all the prayers, it seems nothing works in your life. Something is definitely wrong somewhere. But can I prophesy to a believer this morning that if your prayer has not been answered after this morning, heaven shall hear thy voice. I didn't hear you. I said, heaven shall hear that voice. Let your amen sound convincing. Let me hear you. There are some of us that always try to do things right. If church starts by 8.30 a.m. in the morning, they always come to church by the same 8.30 a.m. in the morning. There's some of us that want to meet the first service of Sunday school. There's some of us that join the main service. And at the end of the day, you keep your time. Some of you are tight payers, you pay your time. Some of you are the midweek services, you come to church. If there are things to clean up in the church, you participate. But you keep noticing that in all those things you do, still nothing happens in your life. God. My brother, why have you always followed some certain things and still it seems your prayers are not answered? Before I talk to you this morning, let me prophesy as a son of the prophet. Any spell or mistake or disobedience by ignorance that has caused your prayer not to be answered. Can I prophesy to that kind of person? After today, heaven will hear your prayers. I say your prayers shall be answered in the name of Jesus Christ. Can somebody give me an amen like a thunder here? Take me to John 14 and 6. 14 verse 6. 14 verse 6. John chapter 14 verse 6. Yes, sir. Jesus said unto him, and Jesus said unto him, I am the way. He said what? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. I am the truth and the life. And I am what? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Now the question is, if Jesus is the way as a person, and Jesus is the truth and Jesus is the life, that you should go through him and receive life and receive whatever you want. How come as a church person you've been going to church and you believe you've been following that way and the truth still nothing has ever changed concerning your life. Nothing has ever changed concerning your character. Nothing has ever changed concerning your business. Nothing has ever changed concerning the story that has been written in your life. Let me tell you something. Something is actually wrong. Either you are not following the way or you are using it as a camouflage to follow the way. Take me to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. I want to be very stupid this morning. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Now, every time as a church member, 
you try to study a Bible because the Bible said that this book should not bother to come out. You try to study, remember in John chapter 1. John chapter 1 says that the word of God is what? Is God. So when you go through the word of God, which is God, there should be every uh, 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 there should be every way for you to understand that when you follow the path of God that you should prosper. Then how come you are following the path of God as a child of God and when you look at yourself, your prayers are not answered. But thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. According to, see, that thou shalt observe to do according to how it is written. That means for a man to succeed, you must follow a kind of principle. But the part of the principle is for you to follow God first. Then the question is, why is your prayer not answered? Because of God? Is it because of God? Is it because of your pastor? Or is it because of you? Three questions we need to answer. Go ahead. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And that, he says, when you follow this word of God, that he comes shall make your way, what? Prosperous. That means God has given a covenant that he, God, will prosper you when you follow his way. Then how come that you come to church early, you keep time with God, you come to church, praise and dance, you pay your tithe, still your prayers are not answered. Somebody say an error somewhere. Go ahead. And then thou shalt have good success. He said when you now follow every part of this God, that thou will do what? I didn't hear you. That will do what? You have a good word. Time. So if you have followed the path of God, then thou supposed to have a good success, and then you are not having any good success, that means something is wrong. And God says, when you follow my path, I shall do everything that I supposed to do for you. Then you witness my success, you witness my prosperity. Then you say you should study my Bible. Then after studying my Bible, then you follow my path, follow my principle. That everything you desire and deserve, that he called, shall make it to come to pass upon your life. Now the question is, then you come to church, you keep your time, you study, you do this, you go home. Still, nothing happens in your life. You follow the way, the truth, and the life. Still, nothing happens in your life. Then we need to look into two major things again. Another thing we need to look into is your church, where you attend to. Your church and your pastor. Who is your pastor? If you have followed the path of God, change your well and nothing is happening. Look into the altar you bow down to. What kind of pastor is he? What kind of life does he live? Who is he? Where is he coming from? What kind of spirit is behind his oppression? Then what kind of teaching does he teach you as a child of God? Then when you look at that mystery, then if actually your pastor teaches you the truth, Tells you the principle you will follow to prosper. Tells you the way you should live to make salvation and live a righteous life. Then that means the fault is not from your church or your pastor. Then let's go to you. Somebody say you. Now the question is this. Do your pastor teach you? With a, maybe let's say yes. Does your pastor tell you the principle of making success, receiving success? Yes. Do your pastor tell you the principle how you will make heaven and live a righteous life? You say yes. Do your pastor always charge you to study your Bible and show yourself approved? You said yes. Then what is the problem? Then let's look at our own personal lives. Do our own personal life have the capacity to stop God not answering us? Church, I'm saying something. Do our personal life have the capacity to stop or hold the hand of God from blessing you? 
said yes. My question this morning is, how come your pastor teaches you and after he might have taught you the principles and understanding of the scripture, immediately you're leaving the church, all the things you, have, you were taught on that day, none of them will go home with you. In fact, from the gate of the church, if they even ask you what was the first Bible reading, you can no longer remember. Even as I'm preaching now, if I ask some people, what was the Bible reading of today? Some will not remember. So the thing comes in from here and goes up from here. You come to church, you hear the word. When you receive the word which is supposed to give you life, the Bible says when you study and show yourself approved, the Bible says that the word dwelleth in thee and changes you and makes you prosper. Now if the word of God makes you to prosper, that means the word of God now have a doublet in you, lifts in you, transforms you, and make you act as one that belongs to God. There is no one you can tell me that the word lives in you if you are a gossiper, you know you leave the church and get up. The first point of call is in the Babi Saloon where you will gossip. The second point of call is in your business place where you're going to gossip with somebody. You are for a kind of person like what happens in the Western world. Before a man will talk to the wife, the wife will pick up a phone and call the police. It doesn't happen much in Africa, but in the Western world, I've traveled so many times for so many years. I can tell you what happens over there. Then when immediately your husband did one thing, it's a forgivable offense. You pick up phone and call the police on your husband. After all, hearing what we preach in the principle of righteousness, a young lady will go home. When he hears that there is a party somewhere, he will now go and wear it's not mini skate. There's that one where they go up so much is called uh, Pompa. Pompa. You see the, the, the new name? Bomb shot. Hi. This is the same person that came to church and it was told to them through the scripture that you do not need to show yourself naked before the world. That means the word of God that were released to you never changed you. When the person will leave, the husband or the wife will discover something. One, we began to slap each other. You become a woman bitter. Or the woman said, my equally slapped the husband. And you claim that you came to the church and you never had any word of God. Or you said you had the word of God. Then how come you hear the word and the word have never changed you? Every time you say, I do. And the same person you see come to church earlier. The same person you see come to church more faster. The same person you see, we come and dance more than everybody. Check by 3 o'clock when they will go to their vi village meeting. The same person will dress half naked. Some of them will wear open their chest so that they, they will show them they get their hairs in their chest. After all those things that you say, I follow the principle of God and you are not prospering. Hear me very well. You are not following any principle because the word and the principle is following God's way, following the truth so that you can have life, which is God. Why is not my prayer answered? Your prayers are not answered, not because of God, not because of your pastor, but because of who? You. I have seen people because of one issue. They will be in this church, 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 they will be in this church. This is a prayer that when you get connected to somebody God uses and you, as long as there is faith, kneel down, he will hear you. He will hear you. There are people today that don't have one church. 
it's difficult for you to, in fact, there are people today, they cannot come and tell you, I've been in this church for 12 years or 15 years or 20 years. You will always hear, ah, I was in that church almost eight months. I was in this church one year, six months. I was in that church three months. I was in this church six months. Where did it happen? Where did it happen? Who you they go find it? Now God, I've been at a prophet, you they find. I've been at a pastor, you they look for. Because if it is God, and you confirm that there is original God in that place, God self will not even answer your prayer that place you are running to. The reason being because you are looking for one person. And that person you are looking for, you even have access to him. So you are now searching for him as if he is lost. The problem why our prayers are not answered is because the word we hear do not live in us. Can I pray a prayer for you? If you can take a decision and understand who this God is. 2019, you will flourish and succeed. You see, anytime you hear somebody come say, this pastor duped me, this prophet uh, charged me money, she killed that person's life, eh? His leg doesn't stay one place. He runs from this prayer ministry to this prayer ministry. And look at that person's life. He will always find a fault when he goes to any, any, any ministry. That prophet, the way they look. That pastor, he preaches too long. He will go to another one. That one preaches very short, not too long. But his prayer, eh? somebody go pray, pray one day there. He go to another one. That one doesn't preach too long. He doesn't pray too long. He says, ah, he talks about money too much. You go to another one. That one doesn't pray too long. He doesn't preach too long. He doesn't talk about money. But he will tell you how. Anytime we go to church, when he go to that preaching, he will be telling us history, history, history. He doesn't open Bible. Anywhere he goes or she goes, she must find one for Look at them very well. They are miracle seekers. They don't go to some songs. The problem is not God, it's not your pastor, the problem is you. Till when you discover your fault, deal with it. Then your prayers will be answered. Can I say something to you? The word you hear, may it transform you. And I know they hear me. I said the word you hear, may it transform you. There are some churches today. If they find out those churches die, that church will shut down. I don't know. Most especially those ones who will be prophets. I could remember when I was running interdenominational, we recorded thousands of people in the church. I left for the U.S. to start a church in, uh, to start um, a ministry in Oklahoma City. If I came back, the, the, the category, uh, the, the number of attendants reduced drastically. I now mistakenly saw one of the members. I said, ah, daddy, are you back? Nobody told us you're back. He said, why have you not been attending ministry? He said, ah, the man way there, I don't see anything. Just come there, you go teach. And do you know the critics they were giving my pastor that time? They would tell me that he would teach and repeat what he don't talk. Repeat, repeat, and somebody would slip off. I received this thing over more than 20, 30 people, not one person. Then I came back that time. I said, it's not because he does, doesn't teach well. It's because your mind, no, they, they, your mind was to hear thus says the Lord. Amen, church. And that is why when, when I decided to start up churches, I decided to speak on the word, know the word. Prophecy will come with prophesy, but know ye the what? The word. Amen. Because at that time we run ministry. Some of you here that was with us then will bear us this witness that if I'm if I'm on ground, we don't even have time to do what? 
to preach. We only do it. Prophesy and testimony. Testimony will start from 12 and end around 4. I will take up prophecy and close 6. No time to preach. No time to preach, but you don't see space. But as we are starting church, I said, if I continue like that in the church, there will be a problem. People will not be prepared. That means you hear testimonies, then he prophesies. Everybody will go home. Hi. And I've equally discovered that when you go to so many churches, you will discover that so many core prophets do not know anything concerning the word of God. I don't know if some of you have noticed that. They don't, know how to, they don't even understand where A or B is. Only what they know is, oh, when he him now, when he they see something on top of your head. Hi. <laughs> and you will see somebody will jump up. Yes, sir. Papa, what are you saying? Tell me. And if you didn't say that, you have caused a problem. Tell me what you need finish. I've seen many people come to me, tell me that I've been here, I've been here, I've been here. This is what I have. This is Kai. There's one that came here and said, please, the Lord sent me to work with you. I said, work. I said, really? He said, yes. I said, where is your former church? He told me. I said, what? Why did you leave your former church? And his church is closer to our church here. I said, why did you leave, leave your former church and come here? He said, because... Our, Our pastor, pastor committed, committed a sin. sin. Hi. I just cracked my head. Inside my mind, I said, see, holy woman. A woman. I said, what is the sin? You know what he told me? He said that the daughter of our pastor conceived when she is not married. And the pastor didn't tell the church. Hi. Nobody didn't marry where your pastor. Nobody didn't see where your pastor. He said, yes. I said, well, how are I say, if that is the case, someone like me, we're not a talk too much. We're not a talk. I have some pastors that lived here that, that had chronic sickness that no worker of mine knew. I keep praying. When I mention that sickness, you will not allow the, even the pastor to touch you. Some of them are not with us again. Anyways. I, I kept it as a secret, and I keep praying, the thing keep producing. And I said, Madam, if that is the case, I know how to keep secrets to pass anything. Let me say, you know the work here. You know the work here. Go, go, go back there. Can you imagine? So you have given your past a judgment. And you claim to be a worker now. You want to be a worker here. We have many people. People are working. People are waiting for standby. Pastors. If you know how many calls I receive in a day. Pastors, I want to work with you. Some say, put me under salary. Some say, give me even if not one room. So automatically, some just need the help for them to come. And I laugh. Every day, there is no week I don't receive it. Let me tell you. The major thing concerning you for you to succeed is one thing. One thing, one thing. And now one thing is this. Study, show yourself approved. Then let the world you study live in you, be part of you, and play in you. Like when you play normal movies, start playing. When God sees you live like he has directed you to do, I am telling you, that the truth is, those promises he has given to you, that you shall succeed and prosper. Surely you will succeed and do what? You will succeed and do what? Live a life of him and see yourself prospering. May I pray for somebody that prosperity shall be thy portion. I didn't hear you. I say prosperity shall be thy portion. Amen. Let me tell you, everything that has to do with God has to do with principle. This time and this period, we, we are in a Thanksgiving season. If you go to so many churches, their churches are doing what? Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving is the time of giving. There's one we went yesterday. Uh, I went with uh, Bromai, Bronyeka. We went there to, yesterday. And because I knew it has to do with celebration and Thanksgiving, I fully prepared. 
in as much as I didn't have anything much, but I needed to prepare very well because it is a season of what? Given. When people were giving 50,000, this one, this one, me, I want and give my own too. That's why I give up. And as people, they give that high. Now, some me go give my own high like that too. It's a season of what? It's a season of what? May you prepare your thanksgiving. The way God wants you to live. May he surprise you with the blessings of your life. Can I say it again? That God shall surprise you with the blessings of your life. Let a believer say a louder amen. If you believe the Lord has done something in your life, put your hands together for this God. Celebrate him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.